Hello, my name is Shane Grammer. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. I'm excited about this video, how to sketch and paint a robot. Um, I, you know, I, I'm always doing pretty intense artwork and I wanted to do something that was simple because I'm always trying to, like I said, get too detailed and get too crazy with a lot of the stuff I work on. So I wanted to play around with um, simple, very simple shapes and, um, and then kind of render it out and have fun with it and a little photo bashing, which I'll talk about through the video. The video is about 40, a little over 40 minutes long. I'm working on a Cintiq 27 inch. Um, I'm in the theme park industry, so I'm a senior creative director and I'm designing large-scale environments, uh, anything from dark rides to attraction-based entertainment and sculptural elements. So I'm, this is what I do all day long. And I'm constantly dealing with other art directors, owners, um, uh, you know, different people that I answer to. Um, so I have a bit of a different process. Right now, I'm just I'm, I'm working in Photoshop. I love Photoshop. And I am not like a lot of artists that I see on YouTube. I use tons of layers. And I'm, you know, I've already sketched out on one layer. Usually I call that my uh, rough sketch layer. And uh, I don't really care about making mistakes. I just start uh, sketching as fast as I can. And then you can see that on that layer, I minimized it drop the opacity probably down to 10 percent and then I, I start to go over it with a bolder plain line which I'm doing now I already start making some changes like that I made with uh, his teeth you know I wanted to um, uh, kind of kind of make it feel like he's like a kid with some teeth Right there, I like to. I use the lasso tool a lot. I'll sketch out, and I'll switch things. I'll make things bigger. And you can see earlier, even when I did my rough sketch, I lassoed around his head and I kind of tilted his head. I wanted and a lot of times when you're you want character to come out of your the characters you're developing. You know, the head has to be tilted, or an eye is bigger. You know, a tooth is bigger. You know. You, you kind of play around with different ways to make it seem like he's cute or he's cool. It has a little style to it. I, you know, I started out with a box and a simple shape for his head, simple shapes for his eyes and his hands. I kind of saw this guy, which I'm calling Robot 07. I see him as this kind of lonely little robot that hovers over junk. I personally like to work with clean outlines. Um, I, I know a lot of artists that don't even use outlines. They just start painting. I don't know if it's a... If it makes me feel... I don't know, uh, secure. You know, by seeing my lines, you know, and I'm probably... Even when I'm drawing, I'm looking at it. I like to make sure I, I feel good about it. Um, again, I, I'm, I deal with a lot of art direction. So I usually, typically, when I'm working on a project, I answer to a lot of different people. And so for his body and his head right now and the antenna and the bolts that I'm coloring gray, I will have all these on layers, everything. And even those layers, I'll break down to a shading, texture layer, shadow layer, because I need to easily, I need to be able to easily go back and manipulate any layer if they don't like it. You know, the client might come to me and say, oh, it's too much rust, or I don't like the blue in the hands. I want it to be purple. I can go back, I can delete the shading or the texture, or I can dilute it, I can manipulate it really easy. So that's, that's how I work, even on a simple, simple character like this. 
So right now I'm just doing all the color blocking. Pretty simple if you're just diving in and learning how to sketch and color. If you've been on my YouTube channel, you'll see that I paint on canvases a lot. And I, I love bouncing back from working on the computer to canvases. So now I'm doing a little photo bashing. I do this a ton. Uh, just because uh, I have to do some texture layouts for projects that we're working on. And I think it's so easy. I can just pull off any rust that I want, any kind of texture in the world, off of a Google image, uh, throw it in here, manipulate it, and you'll see that I'm doing that. And this will be on a separate layer. I'll throw that texture on. I, I probably threw this in my my hands layer and called it texture and now I'm doing some shading over it but I'm going to texture bomb this whole robot and then I'll pull all the textures away and I'll just go back and start shading just with a brush and then at the very end I, I pop those textures back the rust textures Manipulate them a little bit and throw them on different type of, uh, you know, I usually use multiply or overlay. Um, when I, when I'm doing this because I'm using so many layers, I always have a base color. So when that brown that's on his body, that's a separate layer. So I can just go and lasso it anytime I want to. And it, protects that whole edge and then I can go in and just texture it, photo bash it, paint over it, anything like that, and then I go over my edges. I'm kind of just laying out texture, having fun. Um, you know, I, I've done a lot of sculpture work over the years and you know if this guy was an eight foot sculpture, I you know you just know where all the shadows are highlights and the deep areas, lows, highs, where texture would build up or water damage. This is fun. I'm, I'm painting over, just doing some sh dark shadowing over the uh, textures. I typically, I think I kind of see every layer as painting in a way so even my texture or photo bashing you know I've got one texture in there and then I'll overlay another one on top I, I love that just that gritty hardcore rust and I love that yellow too I use the yellow a lot like on a tractor or something and sometimes you could just photo bash off of a tractor or, or an old machine you know just copy and copy a piece of that texture off of it and take it I uh, purposely, you know, I love, uh, you know, you can see I'm just kind of shifting it around because right where that heart is, since it's three-dimensional, water damage would build up right on the top underneath there and it would just keep pouring down. Over over the years and over time, you'd have that water mark going down that the middle of the heart. And then I took it out for some reason, but I know I put it back later. So. You can see my process. I, I, I'm throwing textures on there. It, it really kind of maps things out really quick. And then I get rid of it. And now I'm going to go paint. I'm just going to paint with my brush. Um, I use simple brushes. I'm not a huge fan of, like, I don't have a magic brush. Sometimes I just use the standard, what, what comes in Photoshop, um, airbrush. And, and then I, I love having the opacity really low. And I'll, I'll have a big brush, low opacity, and, uh, and so I get that really soft airbrush edge. And I'm painting, and you can see I, I'm also leaving splotches. I leave some of the lines because there's going to be a lot of water damage, and later on I'll put rivets in there on the heart, like it's been bolted on, riveted on the body. I love watching tutorials on um, people that just do really simple stuff like a ball and 
two circles and a line and it's all of a sudden it's like a little round monster and by the time they're done rendering it, I'm like oh my gosh it's amazing so I'm, I'm trying to do my own thing like that um, going back to my layers I, I'll have multiple layers I'll have a base color then I'll do shading I'll have texture and I'll, I usually use three tones um, I'll have a, a dark like a black I'll have a dark brown and then I'll have an orange if I'm doing rust. It might be a little intense for some people, but it's just the way I've worked for a long time. And I love I love highs and lows, deep spots, you know, where right in there where his teeth are and underneath the eye, it'd be really dark because of shadow. And also over the years with rust damage water damage, maybe a little oil, oil leaks. I love how that just pops things out. That's kind of slow right here, but it's hard to see that I'm actually working on things, but you know, I, I will play around a lot you know for beginners out here that that are watching this video I you know I never I, I don't feel like I really ever had the answers before I start a project you know, I feel like I'm feeling it out if that makes sense I'm I, I do have a rough idea of what I'm gonna do and you know, over time you, you, you start to understand your process more and more you know but I, I do like to Play, I like to have the freedom to be able to play with textures and go, man, I'm not sure if I like that, and or I'll take the orange out, or I'll burn the orange, or do a, you know, multiply the orange, and sometimes I'll take layers and I might uh, copy it, and so that I've got two or three shape, you know, layers of that same color, and then I'll put them in multiply, and I, I just like to play around. I like to try stuff out and see how it looks. And I think that that's a valuable thing for artists, designers to take the time to play around. And I, I uh, follow a lot of artists out, out there in the, in the amazing creative universe of artists that just blow me away every single day. Unbelievable people out there. So I, I constantly am learning. I, uh, Typically on projects, I don't usually get to render things out really beautiful because um, I'm just doing quick mock-ups to get a project passed and then it goes through modeling and CAD and um, then it'll come back and I might get to do some rendering there at the end. But a lot of times um, something like this would be enough you know, to pass a project moving it forward. Now, I believe uh, oh, I'm working on the arms right now, so I'm doing some shadowing. And you can see how I have the lasso tool around the arm because I had just the simple gray base color, so I can always go back to that and just drop lasso on there, even after I've done two texture layers and a shadow layer and a highlight layer. Um, I can always go back do that so I can get in there and work on it. Uh, now I'm just doing a texture brush, standard texture brush, and putting some of my own rust on there. It's funny, I do all this mapping sometimes with photo bashing, throwing textures on there, and then I'll go and paint. Uh, and sometimes I like my paint layer more than I do even the realistic texture overlay working on the shadows on the hands, trying to show the depth and round them out a little bit. Um, I, I know that I want some type of rusted joints in the metal, you know, as his hands have been put together by pieces of metal. And so I'm starting to map that out with a light brush. And I, and I just know that I'm going to constantly manipulate those lines and take them deeper. Uh, 
Now I'm just doing some textures, kind of doing a little bit of scratches, just to break it up and not make it look too good because of, again, this guy's been out in the open like a huge junkyard. It's working. That's why I wanted those big old hands. I love doing the big hands. You know, kind of like his job is to maybe find stuff in some big old rubble. He's got to just dig deep and rip a car in half and move it aside and set it aside and get in and go deeper and dig through and find maybe this little piece of rubble or an engine part that he's got to take back to base. Robot Zero Seven. Um, now I have the lasso tool around the, the little bolt on his nose or screw head. And and I'll do the same thing, you know, I'll have a base color for that and something so simple, and then I'll have a shading layer. And I'm just lightly lightly shading, barely you can see it, but starting around that uh, screw head out. I'll do a little highlight. And I'll probably do a little rust layer as well. I, I, to me, this is an exercise. I call it practicing. I think it's good to, it's good for me every once in a while to do something where I'm not really worried about making a mistake or, or dealing with a client. In other words, it has to be driven by um, you know, all, the, all the information that they give they want which is fine and, and that's that's part of it and I, I enjoy working with other people and getting their input I've learned over the years I am not the smartest person I don't have all the best ideas and I usually work a lot better with a team or with people so I can hear all their ideas now you can see in the that little screw head that there's orange and some brown so I've really kind of just playing around burning that now I'm going to work on but going back to what I was talking about, I, I think it's good to, for me to have a project where I don't have to worry. I don't have to have art direction. I can uh, just do whatever I want and enjoy it and learn, practice. I, my whole life I've loved I love video game environments, I love graffiti, street art, and uh, I've had people tell me sometimes my art, my three-dimensional art in the past is like Star Wars meets urban graffiti. I, I just love uh, mixing the rich colors, bright colors that are just rusted and burn out. So I always tend to fall back on that. This was over a three hour video. I work on it a little bit every morning before I start in the office. I sped it all up. Cut cut a bunch of you know, there's a lot of a lot of dead time where I I'm thinking <laughs> a lot of that. Where I'm trying to figure out what to do or I play with the layers and until I like it. I'm work, working on that little, the little thin, tall antenna. And see just little rust highlights. I like to zoom in and out. You know, when when your when your face is right in front of it, because I'm working on a 27-inch Cintiq. That's pretty darn big. And so this head is probably about a foot wide when I'm working on them. And you you got to zoom out, you know, because it. it what you work on will look different when you zoom out, and you know that's what it's going to look like when you do JPEG. Um, so now I'm just putting a layer over the eyes, starting to clean those up. Um, 
I want it to look like deep glass, so I did another layer of green to go over that black line, and then I just dropped the opacity, so you can just barely see that line, and it gives that illusion that it's glass. And here I am doing some photo bashing. And I, I don't even use this, but you could see that I'm taking this photo bash or photo and I'm manipulating, I can bend it around using the warp tool around the shape of his hand. I didn't end up liking it, um, but yeah, I sometimes I'll do this and I'm just erasing this with the, uh, with the airbrush tool on low opacity so I can just really nicely blend it into it playing around with multiply, overlay, different techniques. I never really liked it. I think it was too much. Sometimes if I like it, um, I will go and paint right over it. It just kind of gives me a, a quick overview of what I'm going to do. But now I'm taking some single rivets, and you can see I'm airbrushing that line away, so it's got a great blend, blending out. Throwing that on the heart. I put a multiply, which I'll play around with. Drop the opacity a little bit. I like how that looks. Making sure all the shadows, highlights are going the right way. I can paint these on as well. Um, I, I just, I just like working this way. And then I'll paint right over them. What I like about that one in the middle up on top, right where the heart goes down now, I pop the texture back that I had. Playing around with that on the body. Sick. I love that. <laughs> I love those dark, uh, just super deep textures and ru rust damage on that head. It's so, so awesome. Again, that's me. You know, this is what I like. I don't want to care what other people think at this point. This is me having fun. No one's staring over my shoulder telling me to change it. You know, all the shadow work I did is popping through that texture. Um, and this is where you have to play around. You have to play around with you know, where, how does it blend? Does it blend right? And I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Now it's going through, and uh, if you've watched other videos of mine, I call it punching, where I just go and punch out areas, it, like the really deep areas, I'll darken, high areas, I'll highlight. So it just kind of, you know, brings that contrast from the, the highs and lows. That's what I'm doing right now with some damage like on the heart I'm working on that some of these really deep areas I'm adding some shading I'm punching it out I love that really deep area underneath his body next to his right hand just really went in there and feathered that out super dark So you're barely working around his eyes. You can tell I really like to I like to play with it. I like to paint it. So now you know I'm playing with my different layers. I probably had three different shade layers. This is the first time I've ever recorded on my Cintiq. Most of the time I'm using my GoPro 5 on canvases and I'm painting out in the shop. So there's some things I definitely want to change. I want to zoom in more and, and um, also you can't see my cursor moving 
from any of my tools, so I'll, I'll work on figuring that out next time. I do want to mix it up. I think I'm going to do a Stormtrooper next on, on the computer in Photoshop. So I just put the lasso tool on the base color of the hands. Uh, you can see on the, the right hand that uh, you, you can see the texture from the photo bash that I did and you can go in it depends on what you want to do but you can highlight the highlights the high spots of those rust damage and you can also darken the deep spots and you can really enhance that texture you can see now that I'm playing around it, I don't like how dark I did it, so I'm, I'm throwing in a multiply, I'm playing, or overlay, I'm playing around with that. But I am going through, punching it out, and hitting all the deep, darker areas. It brings out the dimension. I had some ideas of throwing some graffiti over them and some tagging like some kids in the yard grabbed them held them down tagged them up a little bit but I didn't do that and I also thought about just playing around with the photo bashing more maybe throwing some tractor parts on them or some machine parts blending it into the structure of you know the base or something like that I had one friend suggest putting a jetpack on the back side of them, but I thought, nah, I'm not going to do that. So this part can seem a little boring. I know it's, you barely see me working, but I'm just, I'm shading and playing around where I'm comfortable with it. And, but his hands are starting to look way more dimensional. I don't know how to really teach this part. This is a tough part. I, again, I've been doing this for years. Painting, sculpting. and uh, It's something that I encourage people. You just got to do it. You just got to keep practicing and, and start doing art. Just make art. Andy Warhol said that. Never stop making art. Just keep making art. Because it's a lot of artists, we start out when I was younger, every art piece that I started to work on, I thought was going to be the best in the world and that everybody would like it and want it. Uh, quickly, you learn that's a lie, but you can run with that inspiration and just know that when you do, when you finish that painting, sometimes you like them, sometimes you don't, but you keep making art, you keep practicing, and you, you develop a process. And I'm big about developing process. You have to continue to keep making art. Um, right now you barely see it, but you can see I'm shading the eyes because I want that glass to look like it's set in a little bit on, uh, on around the, the eyes. Just using the airbrush tool feathered out, low opacity, and it just kind of, it, it gave it some life, it makes it look like it's there's a little bit of shadow there. Photo bash. I took this photo off the internet. Typically what I'll do so there's no copyright issues is I'll manipulate it, even when I take it off the internet. Flipped it around. I wanted that little, I didn't want that little dot that's in there, so I'm getting rid of it. Using lasso tool. Now I'm playing around with different effects. So I wanted this eye to look like, you know, it's um, searching, he's searching for whatever he's looking for. So it's just kind of going beep, 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 you know, a little scanning, his eyes scanning the area. 
uh, dropped the opacity down and I'm doing some paint work over it. I, I really like to, like if I steal something from the internet, I always manipulate it a little bit so there's not any issues with copyrights. Now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm breaking up my beautiful thin lines, clean lines. Um, again, a lot of artists don't typically have those clean lines. Um, so I'm trying to not be so precise and I'm trying to break those lines up a bit, not have them so I would like to start learning how to paint without clean lines like that. That will take some practice. And I'm purposely using brighter colors, highlights, to highlight the edges. Give those edges a little reflection. I'm using a brush that's uh, broken, kind of like a texture paint brush. really wanted that jaw, his teeth, to pop out more from the, the body of the head. So it does look like it's a separate joint that moves up and down. I like to leave a lot of my lines janky up on that antenna. That's Um, this, this will be a separate layer. I'll go through highlight. If I don't like how bright it is, then I'll play around with multiplier. I'll drop the opacity. I'll drop the opacity, and then I might make another layer and just go paint hit the, the high super highlights, high spots. Now I'm doing the same thing to the hands. It's always so fun. It's fun to see it. See this guy come alive. Yeah, you know, I appreciate any comments anybody has. Um, I watch tutorials all the time. Love them. I love what people do out there and, and what people teach. So if you have any comments or anything you'd like me see me do or paint you know just let me know I'd, uh, I'd like that uh, direction I'd like feedback if you guys like how I'm communicating you, you know with, I listen to tutorials and I've found myself judging people going oh this kind of there's no information or I don't like how this person communicates and then you start to do it you're yourself and you're like oh my gosh this is not easy <laughs> um, I'm watching robot 07 but I'm also looking at the rust texture around the rivet on his heart and I'm like oh my gosh that's so awesome just little scratches little little deep looks like the paint's chipping off it's so rad okay so the robot 07 letters um, I literally probably made four or five copies because I'm, I'm trying to get that, I want that painted, like it's been painted on the metal, um, but rust has killed it over time. But I want certain letters to pop out, you know, I, I, I want that randomness. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm rusting out robot a little bit more than the 07. You can see that the 07 on his body pops out a little bit more than the robot texture. And I knew I wanted to do this in the very end. Or excuse me, in the very beginning. Add 07 to his hand. That's why I left all that space there. And now I'm taking a texture erase tool, erasing so that you can pick up the texture that's underneath already there. It's pretty 
cool. So I, I was saying that he, this guy was hovering, you know, it's almost like the, underneath his body is just kind of this magnetic, you know, I can just make the sound, you know, it's just like he's, you know, hovering over metal and almost maybe it's a magnetic type of hover machine. Um, so I wanted to do some type of light flare underneath him and I'm kind of thinning out that white so it, it gives the illusion that uh, there's a separation of color underneath him because it's not I don't want fire shooting out but I want it's like lit up magnetic kind of feed force field type of thing and with all that light there would be some reflection on his hands because they're close to it See, look at a beautiful texture, the rust texture as you as I zoom in. Should have zoomed in more. Now I'm playing around with some, I'm photo bashing some light flares. And this all I call, I just call this sexy. You know, it's like the icing on the cake. It just adds to the emotion. I had to go in and erase the background. This stuff you can just find off of the internet. It's amazing. But I've manipulated them. I I'll overlay them, or um, a lot of times to really get a good flare to look real, you have to you have to copy and paste it about four or five times, and you have to play with uh, overlay and multiply. Then you get this really rich, beautiful reflection. I'd appreciate it if you guys uh, could subscribe to my channel, um, like this video if you like it, and also, you know, again, you know, I'd love to hear your comments, your feedback. I really appreciate that. Now, this might be a little bit my graffiti. I call this stylized, little style love add to the very end. Um, I could go without it, um, but I enjoy. When I'm doing this on canvas, this would be a marker, a paint marker. And I just like doing that outline and that little squiggy thing on the back. You know, just, it's all strictly stylized, just having fun. I, I did a JPEG of him without the, the all the stylized and the blue outline, and it was a lighter gray with a shadow underneath them, so it looked like he was hovering. That was pretty cool. I thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned. I hope this taught you something and inspired you. And I'll see you on the next video.